one day, each and every one of you will stand naked before a holy God and you will be judged. Life and death, heaven and hell. Some of you will hear my voice and go to heaven when you die. And others of you will hear warning after warning after warning and you will not listen and you will die under the wrath of God and spend eternity in hell. Young people, listen to me. And you need to be very, very careful. This Christianity is not a cultural thing. This Christianity is, is not something that just should be a small part of your life. It is not something that you do on Sunday. Christianity is not about you living in the world six days a week and coming to church. Christianity is not about you being just like the world all the time and then coming to church on Sunday. If that is your Christianity, you have no Christianity. You are not Christian. Young people, let me ask you a question. How do you know that you're Christian? How do you know that you have truly come to know Christ? How do you know that if you died right now, you would go to heaven and be accepted by God Almighty before his throne? How do you know? You say, well, it's all of grace. Yes, it is all of grace. We are not saved by works. We are saved by grace. We are saved by believing the promises of the gospel. That is true. But what you need to understand is grace is a powerful thing that he who has given you grace to repent and believe gives you grace to continue repenting and to continue believing. He who gives you grace to believe unto justification also will give you grace for your sanctification that you might grow in holiness. As a matter of fact, listen to me. One of the greatest evidences that you have truly believed in Christ unto salvation is that God has begun a good work of sanctification in you. He works and works and works to make you holy. Now, let me ask you, is that a reality in your life? But can you honestly tell me that your great desire is to be holy? Can you honestly tell me that your great desire is not to be like the world, to not be like what you see here in the West and many other places, but to be like Jesus Christ? Can you tell me that? Because if you cannot, you should be afraid. You should be very afraid. Those who love the world do not have the love of the Father. God's motive for saving people is not found in that people. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. When the holy God looks at sinful men, the only thing their sin motivates God to do is judge them, to condemn them. So if God is going to save men, it is not because of men. It is in spite of men. God does not save us because we deserve to be saved. God saves us because he is a savior. God does not love us because we deserve to be loved. We do not deserve the love of God. We deserve his wrath. God saves us because he himself is love. When a church lowers the standard of the gospel in order to get more people to come in, when a church does not preach on holiness and what it means to be truly converted, then Christianity in the church fills up with a lot of ungodly people. And because of their actions, the unbelieving world blasphemes the name of God. But what we need to understand is that the people who claim to know Christ and yet live in a way that contradict the word of Christ and the character of Christ, they are not Christian. We are saved by faith alone. We are not saved by works. But what you need to understand is that a person who has been truly saved has been born again. They have become a new creature. God has done a tremendous work in them to demonstrate his power. He has made them into new creatures with new affections, new desires to serve Christ and to be holy. Has he done that to you? Let me ask you a question. Do you look at the world and long to be like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, dress like the world, have the world's respect and the world's esteem? If you're that way, you ought to be terrified because that just could be evidence that God has not done a work in you. If God's power 
cannot be seen in your life, leading you to greater and greater holiness, then maybe there is no power of God in your life. That he has not regenerated your heart. You are not born again. You are not a Christian because he says, I am going to save people. Why? to demonstrate to the world how powerful I am, not only in saving their souls, but in transforming their lives. Is God transforming your life? Christians are not sinless. Christians are not perfect. Christians will struggle with sin and Christians can even fall. But in the midst of that weakness, it will be evident that God is working. God is teaching. God is disciplining and God is bringing them to greater and greater heights of Christian maturity and holiness. Is that you? Since you professed faith in Christ, are your desires for Christ growing? Are your desires for holiness growing? Is God's power in transforming your life evident? Are you becoming less and less like the world and more and more like Christ? Or are you becoming more and more like the world? When God truly saves a person, what does he do? He begins to work in them with what purpose? To pull them out of the world, to pull them out of worldliness, to pull them out of sin and to bring them to himself. Now, let me ask you a question. Is that obvious in your life? Do you see God working in your life to get more and more of the world out of you? And is God drawing you more and more to himself and conformity to his image? If you have truly believed in Christ unto salvation, then God will be working in you to make you holy. If there is no evidence that God is working in you to make you holy, there is a good chance that you have not truly been converted. When God saves a person, he is cutting them off from what? From the world. What is the world? Everything in, on this planet, every idea, every thought, every word, every action that contradicts God's will and God's nature. Everything on this earth that opposes God. When God truly saves a person, he cuts them off from that and he begins to separate them little by little, changing their life, getting the worldliness out of their life and drawing them unto himself. Holiness means to be separated from the world. Christian, one of the purposes of the scriptures is to teach us what God hates so that we will run away from it. Make no mistake, there can be no friendship with God and the world. And between the believer, there can be no friendship between the believer and the world. If God is truly working in you, he is going to use his word and the power of his spirit to do what? To reveal to you what is wrong in this world and to draw you away from it.